Oh, uh, uh, ah, you, Ben, do that, do that thing. Coming up on this Linux Gamecast Weekly, Steam is coming. Humble Bundle 6 adds four games. Still waiting on one. Publishing with Unity. And Ubuntu Software Center is rubbish. Oh, and we play a new game called Find the Source. Let's go. And we're back for another week. I believe this is episode number six. Is that six? six. My co-host Jordan. Six. Six, six, six. six. Pick up sticks. The podcast of the, the podcast of the beast. Of the beast. And that's one thing we're doing differently. No, not podcasting with beast, but we are trying Skype. You might notice a bit difference in audio and video quality, but we want to test all of Microsoft, our the beast with seven heads, same thing. Same thing. Definitely can tell we have some better video quality coming from you. We had some audio issues earlier, but we're still hammering this out. Um, one thing I do want to touch on for everyone listening, um, did get a few emails. And by few, I mean like three. Why aren't we doing this live? I'll tell you why we're not doing this live. CPU. Pretty much everything on the back end is driven by FFmpeg, and this particular recording is using FFmpeg 1.0. Just built that a few days ago, and we tested and got the audio hammered on. But four cores is not enough, man. Um, have you seen our CPU usage, Jordan? No, but I have a funny feeling you're going to show me. I think that might be in the cards. Oh, this is where we're at right now. You know, it's not too bad, but that last little bit of overhead is the difference between having a smooth recording at 720p versus um some not-so-smooth recordings. But let's get into the news, man. What do you think? Let's go. Let's do this thing. And our first bit, 1,000 user private beta starting in October. So oh, we have our... wait. What? We forgot something. What did we forget? Steam Linux News Update of the Week! Eek, 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 eek. That's all the facts, man. I did all that in post. Um, oh, yeah. No, that's a big thing from, you know, blog. Uh, ValSoftware.com Linux forward slash Linux. Something you want to look into if you're waiting for the um, Steam. But who's going to get in? Do you think you're going to get in? Oh, probably not. But just because that's just my luck. I don't think luck has anything to do with this, man. Because a, nope. from the Valve blog, quote unquote, at this time, we are collecting interested persons for possible inclusion in an external beta in the future. But all you have to do... Are you ready to get this? Oh, I'm braced. Prepared. There's not going to be any nerd smooge anywhere. Oh, that's what the bracing's for. I, 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 I uh, have the hose attached to the receptacle. Indeed. So, to continue, all you have to do is comment, email... On one of the blog posts, or just email it with general interest, and you're in. But there's kind of a catch. That is a post from a few weeks back, so you might not get in if um, you've been throwing to that. But can you imagine how neat a Steam beta would be to be in? Well, part of. Well, that would actually be really cool. One thing we could hope, though, is that if there's enough influx from, or if there's enough interest expressed from enough people that they may open up other betas or they may, they might extend it. Who knows? And that's one of the things with the um, beta. Um, one game. What do you think that game's going to be? My bet is um, Hello Kitty Island Adventure. That would be a good guess. Um, but I don't think that's uh, Valve IP. Um, they're, they're saying either Portal or Left 4 Dead 2. No. I'm inclined to think they might even throw out a mix of both just to get more, ex just to get more statistics. No, I think Left 4 Dead 2 would be 
a brilliant idea to start with, but I think they would oh, yeah. get a much wider adoption if maybe they rolled out Team Fortress too. Maybe I think uh, I think if they do stick with Left 4 Dead 2, that's probably a good bet because it's it's perfectly playable as a single player and it's good fun as multiplayer. So you can you can you can get statistics from both ends of that spectrum. TF2 not so much. That's really only multiplayer only. Hmm. Um, could happen, but I think... yeah. Well, we won't know until it happens. Left 4 Dead 2. I haven't had a chance to play that, have you? Oh, yeah. Used to have Left 4 Dead 2 nets all the time. It's it's good fun. Um, Yeah, you just need to find a lot of maps. But other than that, like, yeah, it's great fun. Right on, man. So I guess our um, next bit here is something we need to get ready to humble. And this is all you, man. Oh, yeah, so uh, four games got added to the Humble Indie Bundle 6, three of which I already own. Woo. Which um, three? Um, we have uh, Bit Trip Runner, Gratuitous Space Battles, Jamestown, and Wizard. Wizard. Well, Bit Trip Runner is fun, albeit frustrating, and Jamestown is a good shmup. Gratuitous Space Battles I liked from... But I got, the problem is I got it from one of the under, other bundles. Under bundles, yes. Um, the, 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 the main type problem I have with Gratuitous Space Battles is that it's really cool to look at, but, man, is it boring to play. Now, there's one thing um, Gratuitous Space Bundles reminds me of is um, you set everything up, then you hit play and watch what develops, right? Yeah. Uh, um, and... It looks pretty as hell, but... Make you a little stabby when you can't change anything. No. Because I want to be able to say... And I might be getting this wrong. I may get a comment saying, you moron. You're doing it wrong. Gratuitous Space Battles is entirely interactive, at which point I apologize, but... I totally want to go ray shields, ramming speed, fire photon torpedoes, that kind of that kind of stuff. Right on, man. Um, that's the same problem I had with the game, and I don't want to call it a problem. Some people like the... I guess it's like turn-based strategy in space, right? Yeah. I don't know. I was more fan of um, RTS than turn-based. Uh, it depends on like the type of turn-based. Like um, Two really good examples of turn-based RP- or not RP- turn based uh, strategy games that come to mind are uh, like the Master of Orion series, which you can play on Linux through Free Orion, or, uh, or uh, Advanced Wars for the Game Boy, which did turn-based pretty well, in my opinion. Uh, um, but yeah, there was something else we wanted to discuss with, uh, with uh, the Humble Indie 6. And that is no, um, it's kind of an important one, man. You just can't gloss software over. distribution is the name of the game. Software distribution and how to do it right. Uh, well, I don't know if using the word right is the right word, but here's the thing. Um, way back when, you got to get off our lawns, Humble Indie Bundle came with the Syracuse. Now, Steam wasn't even an option. It was a Phronix, um myth at that point. And the only good way to update and keep track, I mean, there was no Humble Store. You couldn't log into your account, which even to this day is not a good solution. But back then, we did have Desira Keys, and it would remind you to update the games. Mm-hmm. Where we're standing in... Probably when this comes out, I mean, this is September 30th, so October. 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 Um, where we're standing here, no to Syracuse. Uh, distribution method is Ubuntu Software Center and Humble Bundle Store. But I think you had something to say about how we might be for, able to fix that. Yeah. For, for us non-Ubuntu users, there's not really a way to easily Both get updates. Um, what about the six and- Arch users? What about the Arch users? I'm, I'm for, for once, I'm lumping in the Arch users with the rest of us non-Ubuntu users. I'm sorry, you guys. But, um, but yeah, I mean, like, even a simple launcher script that does some basic distribution checks and 
does some fixes and we'll check we'll periodically check a page that says hey is there an update available uh, and go download the update even if it's just something you have to go out and do uh the other option i brought up in our conversation yeah, yeah, earlier with, this um, yum right yes um uh I, I I don't like to plug, but uh what Red Hat does with uh with their uh Yum repos is you actually have to pay to get access to them. So a similar arrangement could possibly set be set up with uh with Humble so that you would have to like you cannot access the repository for each game or updates for each game without having to have like paid and been given a key. I guess that would. I guess that would require every everything would basically require extra infrastructure on their end. So I don't know how they how they would want to do this. But I mean, like what you mentioned that uh, Rochard got updated. Yeah, it did get updated. Um, but on their end, um, yeah, it's one thing that you know we're kind of skipping ahead here. Um, I like your idea of the launch scripts and everything that checks for updates. And how that's going to work, but that would require the humble indie bundle. Am I correct to do more work with what they have set up versus um, the Fedora project? Well, I mean, I mean, like the humble guys could crowdsource it too. I mean, like a launcher script isn't that difficult to write. Right on. And for a lot of people who aren't used to like getting games set up under Linux. This could be a significantly reduced barrier for entry for playing these games on Linux by just having a script that does, oh, you're in a Debian system, do X. Oh, you're in a Fedora system, do Y. You need X packages or Y packages. Now, here's and a fun question. Is this all going to become a moot point once we get the official Steam rollout? Maybe not, because they're saying they're only going to support Ubuntu for the foreseeable future. And I now, know. Is there any I'm, thought in your mind that that's immediately going to take two seconds to just? They're talking official support. I'm, yeah, uh, they're How talking official support. How hard is it to extract a deb file? And... Yeah, and I can. I, I mean, it, it's trivial to take a Debian file and just extract the actual software from there. But uh, I, again, I'm not talking about people like you or me who know what we're doing. I'm talking about people who are like, oh. Steam is running on a operating system that I don't have to pay for anymore? All right. Hmm. And maybe they outgrow Ubuntu, or maybe Ubuntu doesn't appeal to them. I don't know. Um, even even then, it's just a matter of... Um, well, no, going back to, going back to version checking. Um, I think it's going to be fun, man. I mean, no matter how they roll it out, I think... Genuinely, one of the biggest issues you're going to see is whether or not they honor old Steam keys, because the Humble Indie Bundle has provided Steam keys for, what, the last four or five revisions? Well, no, at least three or four. Mm -hmm. But, a last little bit about the Steam. Not the Steam, we're talking Humble Bundle. Where Humble is Humble. Vessel? Is Vessel Where is it? Where is it? I don't have it. Do you have it? I don't have it. Do you have it? I just said I don't. How about now? Nope. Hmm. I'm, uh, I'm not looking. Yeah. Don't see it. So I think we're on um, about uh, maybe two weeks now, and we're still waiting. Mm -hmm. Either way, looking forward to the game, um, when and if it does come out, but I think we need to keep rocking on since we're on our humble rundown, and that is Rochard. Did I do it right this Rochard. time? Rochard. Rochard. I don't know. How, Rochard. I don't know how it's pronounced. Devs, if you want to get back to us on that, call him. I'll give you his phone number. It's real easy. No. Uh, since last week, I did get a chance to sit down and actually play the game. You know, as oh, yeah. opposed to seeing, you know, if it worked. First impressions, um, never played it before, and yeah, it was alright, but it's gotten an update, mm -hmm. and apparently it doesn't crash as much as it did. Not uh, crashing as good. Well, you know, in the show notes, I do believe, no, let's be honest, um, 
I said it now goes down less than Paris Hilton uh, in a Monaco nightclub. And Classic. I think that's kind of accurate. Not trying to be. I I just feel bad about not Monaco nightclubs having to witness that. Yeah. You so, yeah you know what I I think I feel bad for the nightclub as well. Yeah. That poor poor bathroom stall. So with our 1.31 update, all platforms except Steam and Mac App Store player profiles and progress save location changed. See read me the FPS debugger now has additional mix, well min max information. I've been working with audio too long on the Linux player profile. Progress changes are saved immediately. Middle mouse issues, um, fix mouse delta being way too high. What does this boil down to? Well, it doesn't crash when you look at it sideways. Would that be? Yeah. But you did something very spectacular with this game this week, didn't you? I followed your advice, rebooted my laptop, and lo and behold, Rochard runs. Did you try cutting it off and cutting it back on again? I, yeah, I don't know why that works, but it worked. That's bizarre. <laughs> I, I I am literally boggled. Terrified, petrified, and stupefied, but I was too, because I had, I just immediately assumed it wasn't going to work the first time I tried to launch it, and I didn't reboot, I just relaunched it, then it worked for no explicable reason. Huh. Now, since we're talking about Unity games... Unity games. Let's talk about... Unite 2012, Linux and Flash Publishing with Unity 4.0. Did you have any chance, I know you're a busy man, to look at a little bit of this video? Um, no, I did not, so I guess I'm going to pass this on to you. You know, it's pretty nice. Uh, what they talk about during the video, we'll see if it starts playing here. Um... Linux publishing with Unity 4.0. Long video was long, but it you know it's an hour long video. I get this, but mm -hmm. only the first 15 minutes dealing with Linux. Apparently, the rest of it is with Flash publishing, and I just kind of skipped over that. But what is supported? 32 and 64 bit. Their target now. This is something. It's kind of obvious, unfortunately, in today's society. Their target is Ubuntu. 1010 and later. So like Steam, they're going with Ubuntu. Good thing, bad thing, sideways thing. Uh, it's a teardrop, but I mean, Ubuntu's kind of the lowest common denominator, so... Mm. And on top of that, let's see. Exporting with Unity 4. Simple as exporting with you know, PC. I hate calling it PC. Windows or Mac. Mm -hmm. And one of the neat things they have going on with a partner, well, not really a partnership, but you can go to developer.ubuntu.com, just upload your package, you know, export your Unity player and send them a zip. Boom, mm -hmm. you're ready for the App Store. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah, well, it's convenient. It takes a lot of the worries about, um, well, not necessarily just the packaging, but hey, they're going to take care of the download bandwidth and all that fun stuff. Yeah. But then that's part of distribution, I mean. That is, uh, what do you think the rev share for the Ubuntu Software Center is? I don't know. Wild guess. Um, I don't know, 60-40? Uh, out of my ass? Uh, you're worse. 80-20. Um, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad. And they're also going to... Yeah, considering they're covering the download bandwidth and everything. Yeah. yeah. And initial customer support. Other distribution platforms will include Desura, which I'm happy about. Indie Royale, but they partner with Desura for distribution, so same difference. And Humble Indie Bundle, which partners with Ubuntu Software Center. It's a circle, what do they call those? Circle... Circle handle? jerks. No, oh, that's horrible, man. Why would you ever think no. of that? No. No, 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 no that's wrong, man. You're a bad person. 
I'm a terrible person. I don't know. You're the one. You're the one making the gesture there. I just kind of read you. Yeah, yeah. All right. So they say. Circle of circle of life. Circle of forward momentum in reverse. Um. One thing with an Unity 4.0, no input manager, so you're going to have to come up with your own way. I mean, if you're a developer and you're not already booked to tears, and you didn't watch this video, you're going to have to do your own um, screen size control configuration and all that. That's not going to be supported out of the box. So what do we have up next? Uh, uh, something related to dropping the soap. You know, I was going oh, to do okay. dropping soap, but here's the thing. If you go to linuxgamecast.com, there's a game. It's called Prison Architect, I believe. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. Prison Architect, um, they have a really high, uh, what would you call it? Alpha V? I don't know the right word. Uh, Buy-in is what I would, you know. It's not a Kickstarter, because it's not in Kickstarter. It's... If you give them $30 US, wet, stinky cash, you can get into the pre-alpha. And they've recently updated their site to say that it doesn't work on Linux just yet. Send them an email. And I asked them, and they said, but there isn't a time scale on the Linux version just yet. What do you think hmm. about that? I mean, that tells me that you're not really developing cross-platform. Maybe it probably means that they're gonna just port it somehow. Somehow, I don't know. Through um, evil voodoo black magic. Would you spend thirty bucks on a bet that it might have Linux? Support? No. Yeah. No. no. There's no official retaliation for that. I could, I could go for a nice dinner for thirty bucks. Yes. You could eat too. I could eat too. It'd be fantastic. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Food's wonderful. Love it. So, dun, 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 dun. Zelda. Did Do you ever play Zelda when you were growing up, when you were a kid? Oh, I did. I did. I played. Um, First I Zelda. Game. Super Nintendo, First but Zelda I had, game. They, they, they bought me uh, a Link to the Past DX for the Game Boy, and they bought me. Uh, Ocarina of Time for the N64. So, yeah, I have some history with Zelda. First Zelda game, Zelda 2. Mm. First game for the Nintendo Entertainment System with a backup battery, which was a CR2025 watch battery. All right. Yeah. But let's fast forward now. You probably have a bit more affinity towards this. This is Mystery of Solaris DX. And it does harken back to, um, let me just go ahead and skip over here to the video so you can see it. Now, that definitely reminds me of the SNES version. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it looks like an old Super Nintendo game, which is really cool. Um, maybe a continuation of the story. Did they have grappling hooks in that? Yeah, no, you, you wait, you played, you played Zelda and you've never dealt with the hook shot before? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, man. I, I, get, I, get the, I guess the hook shot is after the time of the dinosaurs. Yeah, well, I had a um, 3D effects video card at that point. All right. So, um, uh, as amusing as your 16-bit entertainment was. Yeah. Uh, you were, yes, the... PC gaming master race. Yes. Glorious. So before the show, we were both trying to get this up and running, and I did a um, just a basic. They have dev packages. I need to um, skip back to this. Um, you can download um, Debian and Ubuntu 32 64 bit. It's um, Solaris and the um, ZSTX 151 packages. I just went ahead and grabbed the source, but you'll also need the game data from mm -hmm. the source package. Put it together. If you're running Ubuntu, you're probably going to have to install a ton, not a ton. Would you say a ton, metric ton, quarter metric ton? 
I had to on Fedora. I had to install a bunch of libraries I, that I thought I had. I also had to install libraries that apparently I fail at recognizing the difference between capital and lowercase letters for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, man. Physifus, uh, Modplug, SDL, Tiff, uh, SDL Image. A couple of fun things. After that, it built under Ubuntu because I like to build things. It uses CMake for the build system, if you want to use mm -hmm. that. Did you get it installed under Fedora? Oh, yeah. I, I got it up and running on Fedora. Yeah. I have not given it any significant playtime because I was compiling it before the show was started, but <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to give that one a playthrough. Yeah, I'm wondering if it supports controllers, but being SDL, mm, guessing it does. Cool. Cool, man. And so let's rock on with our next last bit here. And that's from Laser Brain Studios. Now that's a cool <coughs> name, isn't it? Sorry. Never make that sound again in public. Oh, I intend to, constantly. Yes. By constantly, he means never again. Never again. Oh, come on. You've had to watch Empire Strikes Back. Uh, Laser Brain uh, Laser Studios Brain. is rocking out with a pre-alpha demo, and by pre-alpha, that translates to free. You mean you can download this for free right now. It's eventually going to be a commercial game. But what is it? I mean, you got to keep in mind, this is a very early build of the game. One test level, missing a bunch of features, graphics, and polish. And it might not be. Are you ready for this? Brace yourself. Yes. One hundred percent stable. No. Yeah. Free the software not working. I am shocked and or didn't have a chance to capture any video of this. It's a point and click adventure stealth game. It's got a um like sound meter, so I'm guessing that's going to play a factor into it. And what I've read about it, it's difficult enough. Um, people having problems completing the first mission. I don't know if that's necessarily that it's really good or it's just really buggy at this point. Maybe a bit of both. Could be a bit of both, yes. but it looks good. Um, it kind of reminded me from the screenshot with, as like Sims with guns. I am a fan of this immediately. Sims with guns. How can you go wrong, Sims and guns? I know, I know. It's like uh, when you're playing The Sims. Yeah, you, you don't know, like my cooking. Two blam, blam. Room, make one a hug or the other one a slapper and just enjoy the show. Yes, or you can put everyone in the pool and take the ladders out. That, that one's also fun. That's very fun. Oh, we are horrible overlords to our Sim minions. Do you remember what was it called? Black and white or good and evil? Yeah, yeah. black and white where you could black literally spank your monkey in front of the people. That's not a euphemism. No, you were literally spanking a monkey. That's the only way you could possibly get away with doing that. Well, outside of Japan. I'll give you that one. So it's time for our favorite game. Did I tell you that we had a favorite game? I have a favorite game now? You now have a favorite game. Do you know what that favorite game is? What is that favorite game, sir? It's a Trixie one. Trixie Hobbitses. It might be for Hobbitses. But we were thinking, do you ever go to phronics.com? Uh, occasionally. I heard you read like to read a benchmark or two from there. Yep. They're usually the only, they're one of the few guys who actually do benchmarks for hardware, so um, on Linux anyways. Linux hardware, I mean, that's a completely valuable thing. But you have a, you know, sometimes I like to test my skill. And and I didn't realize this until a couple of weeks ago. I, I was on my tablet looking at a Phronix article. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I want to go back to this source article that this information is being cited from. Now, right. you, yeah, you have a tablet. I do. And there's one issue with the tablet. You can't really get that mouse over effect, even in Chrome or Firefox or whatever you're using, right? Yeah, yeah. So, when you're faced with a Phronix article with two paragraphs and ballpark eight or nine hyperlinks, how do you pick? Uh, I guess you would pick at random, why wouldn't you? Hmm. So, 
That's our game. Ooh. Ooh, and it's going to be tricky. So let's go ahead and jump over to phronics.com, and we are going to go, which I promise neither of us have done anything but look at it. Mesa 9.0 gets a release date in here. I'm going to zoom in. So, story aside, we're looking at this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's um, one out of six chance, right? One out of six chance, actually. Now, if I'm a betting man, I'm going, knowing Phronics, it's not going to be the first link at Mesa 9.0. I have a die here, so we can test that statistic. Ah. Careful with that. Careful. We don't need to divide universes, and paradoxes are dangerous. Community reference. I like it. Mm. So, if I am going to pick here, we're reading. You continue as I'm doing myself, and we'll see if we can All come right. up here branching GL3. Mm. Mm. I'm going e GL31 e for Intel driver. You're going. You're going with the driver one. Yeah. I am going to go with the mailing list message. Okay, GL driver mailing list message. Let's see what we have here. GL driver is drum roll. Tap the desk. Boom. Phronix link. Okay, here we go. A new mailing li Ah, oh, Jordan, you win. Ah, uh, that the one was a bit too obvious. No, not... Next time. Ah. No, to me, Next it would be like the Mesa 9.0 link, which... Phronics.com. Mesa 8.1, Phronics.com. Effectively, Phronics.com. A branch at Phronics.com. GL31, Phronics.com. <laughs> yeah. So, um, first annual, first episode of Phronics. We'll be back with that next week, hopefully. I am Wiener. If anyone wants to keep score, maybe make a scoreboard for us, that would be nice. Because we're probably not going to keep track, but we're going to keep doing this because it is definitely um, challenging. So, do you got anything um, news-related, fun stuff you need to plug and scream about? Have anything fun going on? At the Fedora Project, a coworker of mine actually recently got a uh, native build for um, the Raspberry Pi working using the um, the native ARMv6 HL architecture. Okay, which is really didn't cool. Fedora already boot on the Raspberry, though? It does, but it is a long and sordid story involving ARM architectures and the list of actual ARM computers on the market. Hmm. If if you want me to go on about that, I can. But I assure you, it will put most of our listeners to sleep. So if you, if you could summarize you it, is it a good thing or is it a bad snake? Happy really? panda or sad it, it, panda? It is a. Um, I wouldn't say it's a good or a bad thing. I just say it is a thing. Hmm. Are you saying it's working though? Uh the, the RMB six. Is booting yes, but this is a bootstrap. So this is early. This is li like like our hostile takeover friends. This is pre-alpha. So right on. And for me, same old, same old. Um, we're playing around with uh, Skype, always with audio issues. The software is still in a constant state. Oh, I wouldn't even call it flux. It's just whatever crackpot idea I wake up with every other week and try to implement. Um, as always, before we get off, um, just to let you know, we're going to talk Doctor Who after the show's over, and that's going to be after the end of the show. It's still going to be in the show, but don't watch it unless you watch Doctor Who and you're ready for spoilers, because if you do that, Small and you complain, minors. you're just stupid. I mean, you daft to a level that I couldn't even explain. Which I'm sure you'll be more than happy to complain about on YouTube, because we get some fantastic comments, don't we? Oh, yes, we do. Oh, yes, we do. And not bad. Just stupid. 
But interesting I, comments. Yeah, definitely interesting. So I'm Vin Stone. You can find us. Oh, check this out at Vin Stone. Download this. I mean, if you're watching us on YouTube, man, you can get a non-flash version, HD, SD video quality, also an MP3 format. Just go to linuxgamecast.com, mouse over the podcast button. We're even on iTunes with audio and video. That's fun. Scream at us if you have a question about Linux gaming, a how-to, or anything like that. Check out the forum's how-to section. And as always, scream at the massive swing at the burning fool. Massive. Uh, well, it's the cool t-shirt, man. I mean, come on. Incendiary lemons. Oh, that's like a almost better than a tornado in a can. That's better than almost. a tornado in a can. Heresy. Because when when life gives you lemons, you make incendiary lemons and burn your neighbor's house down. He's stable, ladies and gentlemen. I trust you. Um, and single. <laughs> <laughs> Call him. That's going to wrap up our show. Um. Say goodnight to the lovely people. I'm going to say cheers, ladies and gentlemen, with the skull rings, as always. And Jordan, and we'll see you for the after show. So let's talk about Doctor Who, motherfucker. Doctor Who, motherfucker. Okay, I gotta say this right off the bat. What do you gotta say right off the bat? When they said Statue of Liberty was gonna be a weeping angel, I was expecting more than the fucking three-second cameo. Okay, there was like two clips of it, with, and it was the same damn shot. I know, I thought they were gonna do something cool with it, but no. No, no, it was cool. Boom, boom, and I was like, oh, I wonder what that could be. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess it was kind of cool, right? But who who wouldn't notice that, though? No, that was so That's not the... cool, man. I knew exactly what that was. And I was like, oh, what's that loud noise? I was like, oh, fuck all. What do you think it is? The Statue of Liberty. It's a really big Dalek. Yeah. No, it's 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 that Cyberman woman back from, from that one Christmas special, back for revenge. Mm. So, um... You know, the BBC's really got to stop doing this mid-season crap, man. Oh, no. I wouldn't even mind mid-season if they would, like, chop it six episodes and six episodes. But no, we get four. And then we got to wait till December for the Christmas special. Yeah, we get a little dose in December. Then, what, three, four more months. And then we get our Doctor Who fix again. Yeah. That's just terrible. Talk then, about and then we get to learn stick. about the new companion. Jenna Louise Coleman. I'm actually interested about that. Yeah. I I mean, they had her in the first episode of the series. Yeah. Wrongly, but, because she really shouldn't have been that. That should have been the Dalek. Yeah. It shouldn't have been. I mean, the most insane of the insane Dalek should have believed it was human. Yeah, that would be like, in, in a race full of hate-filled, horrible people, the one person they think is, is insane is an actual friendly person. Right. But, on that. And we completely but, agree with that hypocrite Western episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, genocide's okay if I do it, but you, no. You get to burn. Yeah. But this, I mean, it was predictable. Um, not really. Yeah. I, I could see where they were really going for, you know, the attempted tear joke, uh, the last page and all that, but... I, I kind of think that they're trying to humanize the Doctor too much, man. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about humanizing, but... What, what, bu what bugs me, though, is... And, I mean, like, this is Doctor Who. Who am I complaining about continuity for? But, like, the way they handle paradoxes is completely different from, like, that Ninth Doctor episode where Rose goes back in time and saves her dad. Right. What, what happened to, like, the freaking thingy beasts with... No, as soon as I got done watching that episode, I went back and uh, watched uh, The End of Time, Part 2, where even the Doctor goes back and meets, uh, what's-her-name's, uh, 
mother's father and everything were yeah it's, mm. I don't yeah, know. I didn't but, like the whole the, Deus the, Ex Machina of New York. Oh, one paradox too many. Yeah, can't go but, back. I mean, nope. I mean, we're we're complaining about logic in Doctor Who. That's yeah, completely fine with the Weeping Angel being Statue of Liberty. Never addressed throughout um, since the French brought it over. But yeah, got a problem yeah. with this other thing. Yeah. yeah that. I mean, that didn't bug me as much because, I don't know, they could have, like, replaced all the statues or something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I know that point, man. I mean, it's episodic. I don't like where they left it because it doesn't, it feels like that should have been a series end, uh, not a uh, mid series thing because it doesn't make me excited because it's like, all right, you basically have to reboot it now. Yeah, mid season, right when there's a, I I guess they haven't really kicked off any story arcs, so it's no harm done. But right. still, it seems like what it seems well, there's like a the waste blinking of half lights. Season. There's always the blinking lights. Always the blinking lights. Yeah. It, it, I don't know. To me, it seems like a waste of half a season. But you know what? Hmm. The the back half may really drill it home. It may be great. Well, I'll tell you. Before we close this out, one thing that did kind of warm my heart a little bit. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wait, you have heart? Well, it's kind of a um, bleak black thing that takes the place of one, but yes, it's close facsimile. All right. Yeah. I got to see Justin Bieber throw up on stage. Okay. I don't care about Justin Bieber. I I, I basically pretend he doesn't exist, and it I- stopped bothering me. It's horrible, man, what people were saying. I mean, she just had morning sickness. I mean, that's all it was. Oh, yeah. yeah. No more. No more. But, but, the, but wait, how, how did Selena Gomez get another one pregnant? That's the other. That's the thing I want to know about. Oh, man, she's a tricksy one. She's a tricksy one, all right. That, that's one hell of a trick. So before we dig ourselves any deeper, um, Mr. Swag. Before, uh, <laughs> before we get sued by Warner Music Group or whoever the hell Bieber belongs to. Yes. And lose our meager livelihood, of which we do have. We're going to say goodnight, and thanks for hanging out with the after show and Doctor Who. Um, next week, it'll probably be Fringe. Oh, oh, you time. know what? I haven't even been watching Fringe for the past three seasons. I liked the first season, but I just stopped watching and that, ladies and gentlemen, is why he's now dead to me. Maybe we'll get caught up next week. Oh, boy. Say cheers. Bye.